Okay, good morning. Uh, good morning, Georgia, Anita, Paul, and Lai Lama. Thank you for uh, joining class on time this morning. Uh, we'll begin. Can I ask uh, Paul to lead us in prayer, please? Okay, let's have ourselves and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for again bringing us this morning to class. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us always. We thank you for, for having kept us, Father, as we are going to hear your word. Give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding. May all what we are going to learn give, give us knowledge that will change the lives of the people. We cover the teacher with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the words he's going to speak be the words that comes from you. And let it in, be in built in us. We pray for stable network throughout the session. We pray and declare all this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Um, Welcome. So last class, before we ended last class, we were looking at uh, chapter 4 in uh, the book um, Kingdom Builders. We were looking at chapter 4, the nature of a God-given vision. And uh, we saw that a God-given vision is a command from God. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, uh, you know how God leads us and guides us in the purpose, the plans, the vision he has for us. It can be a simple steering in our hearts. He just stirs up our hearts to something like uh, we read about Nehemiah, how he was stirred up in his heart when he heard about the broken walls of Jerusalem. And it was not just an emotional steering where you feel sad about something for uh, a day or for that moment or a week or a month, but something that stirs up your heart till you take action, you do something about it, you see God's plan and purpose fulfilled in your uh, life. And also we saw that, you know, God-given vision has a, a specific time, uh, appointed time for its initiation and for its execution. So we looked at the Kronos time and Kairos time. God works in the Kronos time and the Kairos time. So the Kronos time is a time when uh, basically the Greek word Kronos, uh, we get the English word chronology, uh, you know, where God, uh, the Kronos time or the Kronos season uh, is a time when God is revealing his plan, his vision to us and um, how we go, how he goes about preparing us for it, how we uh, organize things, plan, uh, execute things. And the Kairos uh, season or the Kairos moment is the fullness of time or the God appointed time uh, when God will bring about uh, whatever he has, uh, you know, envisioned for you, what he has planned and purposed uh, for you. And we saw two examples um, that of Joseph's life and, um, how Joseph, you know, from the time he got the dream when he was a young boy, he had to wait till 30 years, you know, uh, uh, which is the Kronos time. And, you know, after 30 years was a Kairos moment when he saw the fulfillment of his dream. Uh, another example we saw was in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 3, where God uh, says, you know, uh, that um, the seed of the woman will destroy uh, uh, the seed of serpent. Um, and so we see that it took 4,000 years. So that those were the Kronos moments. Um, and then at the fullness of time, the right time, God brought about his son, which is a Kairos moment. Okay, so God works in um, these two uh, time frames, the Kronos and the Kairos uh, seasons or the time frame. And uh, so we also saw that, you know, God, uh, when he gives us a vision, he just doesn't entrust it to us and leaves, but he prepares us uh, uh, so that we can, uh, you know, uh, we can be enabled, we can be, uh, you know, uh, equipped enough uh, to fulfill his plan, purpose, the vision that he has for our um, life, okay? Um, you know, and we also saw that uh, God-given vision may differ from our expectation, uh, you know, uh, the way God sees it, foreplans it, uh, you know, can be very different from how we envision, how we see it. We look at uh, the life of uh, uh, of Joseph 
uh, and how you know we can plan things in a certain way we can envision things in a certain way but also how god brings about uh, his plan and purpose also we looked at uh, in chapter um, uh, three the mary miracle you know uh, mary and joseph would have thought they would have you know when they go to bethlehem they would find it in easily the place to stay uh, but that was not the case so you know sometimes we envision things in a certain way but god has something else uh, in mind which he brings about uh, which he uh, orchestrates in our lives okay then we saw that the kairos moment uh, for the god given vision uh, can get delayed you know when we do things in our own carnal nature or our fleshly nature uh, the example we saw was of um, moses okay uh, so we stopped there last week we'll continue from um uh no, page number 47 where we were look we are going to be looking at uh, we continue looking at chapter 4 uh, a god given vision sorry 42 uh, where we're looking at a god given vision is um, a minute may not be understood by everyone okay page number 42 uh, a God-given vision may not be understood by everyone. Now, the example given there is in Acts chapter 7, verses 23 to 25. We looked at it um, last Wednesday. You know, uh, it's basically saying how when Moses was 40 years old, uh, it came in his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. He knew, uh, you know, why God had uh, raised him up in, a, though he was a Hebrew, why God raised him up in Pharaoh's palace. Uh, and what was his calling? What was God's vision for his life? What was God's plan for his life? Um, and we see that, you know, when he goes to meet his brethren, visit his brethren, he sees um, one of the Israelites being beaten up oppressed in uh, by the egyptian and what does he do he tries to stop them but uh, in his uh, fit of rage uh, you know he um, uh, uh, destroys or kills uh, the egyptian uh, because he had this whole uh, uh, he he had already known that he god had called him you know to deliver uh, his people out of slavery out of bondage so he kills the egyptian um and in verse 25 it's of acts chapter 7 he's it says for he supposed that his brethren would have understood that god would deliver him uh by his hands but they did not understand so uh, Mo Moses knew his calling, what uh, his plan and vision for his life was. He thought that, you know, uh, by killing the Egyptian, by helping the uh, his own uh, Hebrew brother, uh, you know, they would understand that God has finally raised up a deliverer, but they uh, failed to understand. Another example that we can look at is uh, in the life of uh, the Apostle Paul. You know, when Paul had that powerful encounter on the road to Damascus, uh, which changed his life and... Um, you know, Jesus had uh, personally encountered him and, uh, you know, given this, given, given him this great calling uh, for ministry. But yet in the, in the, in the beginning few years of his, um, uh, his ministry, you know, we see that um, uh, many of them from the church did not uh, uh, accept him. They were still very suspicious of him and they kept away from Paul thinking that maybe he's just uh, pretending or he's acting um, and, uh, you know, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll know everything about them and then finally he'll persecute them and throw them in um, prison. So because of this, you know, Paul had to uh, spend a lot of time alone uh, he had to stand by himself, you know, just holding on to the vision that he, uh, God has given him and strengthening himself uh, in the uh, Lord. Okay, uh, we also see that, um, you know, when uh, people don't understand uh, a God-given vision that God has given to you, we need to hold on uh, to it. Uh, you know, there are times when uh, we would, uh, we can share uh, what God has laid upon our heart, what 
God, uh, what's uh, God calling uh, upon our lives? What is His vision? But there are times when we need to, you know, hold back. Uh, we need to know what is the right time to share with whom, uh, the right people with whom to share, uh, so that we can take forward God's uh, vision. So let's look at uh, an example in Galatians chapter one, verses fifteen and uh, sixteen. Can somebody read that, please? Galatians chapter one, verses fifteen and sixteen. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then we pleased to him to reveal his son to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. Yes, you can continue. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to consult with those who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went away into Arabia and later I returned to the city of Damascus. Thank you, Jeffina. So here we see that, you know, um, God is, the, you know, just after his uh, Paul's encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, uh, we see that also Jesus revealing to him that he's going to preach uh, uh, or he's going to be an apostle uh, among the Gentiles. And uh, Paul says very clearly that he did not immediately confer or share this with uh, with other people, flesh and blood, which is uh, other people. But then he went away quietly to Arabia. And we know that the first 17 years of Paul were the silent uh, years of Paul. And we see that, um, you know, during the 17 years, uh, he received much revelation. Uh, which he preaches and which he writes about in his episodes, which we read even today. Um, but, you know, he did not share about his calling among the Gentiles. He did not share it with uh, the people who uh, trusted in him. And also he did not go up to Jerusalem and share it with the uh, apostles. So there are times when, you know, um, God would uh, show us when is the right time that we need to share the vision that he's given us, uh, you know, with whom, uh, so he will send the right people, uh, uh, you know, and also this uh, sending the right people to into our vision is also a confirmation what God has spoken to us. And uh, over time, we see that God will give us more clarity, guidance, direction and wisdom uh, that is required to carry out the vision. Um, uh, may God may also send, you know, some people to counsel us, guide us. Uh, show us how to go about executing it practically, uh, the vision that God has laid, us, uh, laid upon our hearts. And we must be receptive to what God is um, speaking into our lives, what he's showing uh, in our lives through various people that he sends our way. But we also need to be very careful, you know, who we uh, invite into the vision that God has given to us, because there are some people who can come in and destroy uh, uh, God's vision. Uh, they can make things difficult for us. So we need discernment. We need God's wisdom. And it, uh, even in that area, God can lead us and guide us okay a god-given vision would uh, face demonic uh, opposition so uh, we look at uh, nehemiah chapter 2 verses 18 to 20 so can somebody please read nehemiah chapter 2 verses 18 to 20 please Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 18 to 20 and I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me so they said let us rise up and build then they set their hands to this good work but when Sanballat the Horonite Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it they laughed at us and despised us and said, What is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Thank you, Rosalind. So here we see, uh, you know, Nehemiah is uh, 
after stirring in his heart about uh, you know the condition of the walls uh, that surround Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, uh, he you know he just doesn't fast and pray and moan about it. But uh, that's something that he gets into action. He talks to the king. The king gives him a letter, gives him, uh, you know, uh, support and help of materials. Also gives him, uh, you know, people as security uh, to lead him to uh, Jerusalem. And when he goes to Jerusalem, we see that, you know, uh, when he goes there, we read last week that, you know, he does not reveal what God has put in his heart. Okay, so he just keeps it quiet. But then after that, he reveals it uh, to the people and the people uh, are encouraged and they take on the vision that is basically, you know, God just speaking to them, uh, steering their heart. And the people readily bought uh, uh, Nehemiah's vision and uh, of building the walls of Jerusalem in spite of the threat, in spite of the problems that they would face. And so they, says, they say, let's rise up and um, build. Okay, so they start uh, planning to build and that's when we see that um, you know, uh, some of the uh, Arabs and the Am uh, Amorites, you know, the Ammonites, sorry, uh, they kind of uh, uh, kind of bring a disturbance in the work, opposition. Uh, uh, but we see that in spite of all that they, uh, uh, you know, try to do, uh, you know, uh, Nehemiah was steadfast in what God had called him. God had given him the grace, uh, the victory. So we see that uh, these people tried many times, these Arabs, uh, Sanballat, Tobiah, Gishim, you know, um, uh, how they mocked him, they opposed him, they wrote letters to the king, uh, they tried to stop the work, but in spite of that, Nehemiah was still steadfast, uh, you know, uh, to what God has called him, why he went there, and the people also supported him and they continued the work. So we see that, you know, when uh, a God, when God gives us a vision to execute a plan and purpose, it might not be easy. Uh, we will face a lot of demonic um, opposition uh, that will come in very subtle ways, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, very, uh, very simple ways, uh, which will not catch our attention. Okay, so we'll just look at a few wa ways in how uh, demonic opposition can come. It can come uh, through distraction. Um, you know, there can be other things that, you know, uh, uh, try to pull away your uh, time and attention and your energy. It can be, uh, you know, it can be your family, it can be your spouse, it can be your children. Uh, it can be something to, uh, with your, you know, with your home. Uh, it can also be uh, some distraction, you know, with some other project that is there, which you can earn good money. And you think that money can be put into uh, fulfilling God's vision. But, you know, all of these distractions are actually very subtle, becomes very uh, uh, subtly and very deceptively. And we need to uh, take note of it because these distractions can break our focus and result in wasted time and energy. And some of these distractions can be good things, uh, can be important things, uh, and so, you know, we don't think or see them as distraction, but we need to be, uh, you know, we need to be very mindful of it. And if we are constantly walking in the spirit, uh, we are constantly, you know, uh, focused on what God is asking us to do, asking him for leading and gui guidance. He will show us the distractions that we are getting entangled in. Okay, uh, demonic op uh, opposition can also come as a diversion. It can just be a small diversion, but it can, you know, uh, you know, it can begin very small, but then it can later on become like a huge gap or a distance uh, from what God has called us uh, to do. So it's important to constantly check ourselves uh, to see uh, if we are, uh, you know, we are in line with God what God has called us to do, and we need to realign our vision to what God has uh, called us and stay aligned to his uh, leading. It can also come, demonic op uh, opposition can also come as an internal dispute uh, or a strife. Um, you know, strife can uh, can be very destructive. It can be an internal strife just with members in the team, uh, with the, or it can also be with the leadership. 
uh, that is there, you know, just these small disputes, these strifes uh, can actually uh, distract us, can, uh, you know, sap us of our energy and our time. Uh, it can be also a diversion. So we need to be careful that, you know, uh, we don't get entangled in any kind of strife or dispute or quarrel. Uh, just leave all those things to the Lord. He will take care uh, because there will be people who come in uh, who will try to bring about dispute and strife. But I've always seen that, you know, uh, when we are uh, busying ourselves in, in just doing what God has called us to do, you know, uh, and we know that this, uh, uh, you know, this demonic op opposition is coming to strife. Uh, we don't get caught up in that. Uh, I never get caught up in that because it's going to take a lot, lot of my time, my energy, uh, uh, drainage and my emotion. Uh, uh, my feelings, my mindset. Uh, I just say, God, I can't handle this. I just have so much to do. Uh, I just want to take care of it and I want you to handle it. And believe me, God just beautifully just uh, handles it, takes care cares of it. You know, sometimes without me doing anything, I can just see the people, the person leave or uh, the leadership take them into accountability and do what is necessary. Uh, or sometimes God can just uh, teach them or, you know, or can uh, through you can also, um, you know, build up that relationship with them. They'll be able to see what you are doing, why you're doing things. Uh, God would uh, give them that clarity and whatever hatred and anger that they have against you, you know, uh, will just be put off. Demonic uh, opposition can also come as uh, discouragement. Uh, we all face challenges, uh, sufferings, uh, discouragements in various ways. Uh, sometimes it can be through even our own family member, our spouse, our children. Sometimes it can be with the people in our team. Uh, but, you know, we need to learn to encourage ourselves uh, in, in God and press on. And that is what, uh, you know, uh, David did. You know, remember David when uh, he went to do some exploits uh, with the 400 men that... Uh, he had and he when they came back to the place where uh, you know where their wives and their children were where they were living they see everything burnt down uh, every their all of their cattle taken away uh, uh, the uh, their wives and their children are all taken away and you know they are so discouraged that these four hundred men along with. Uh, uh, David, you know, they cry, they weep, they moan their heart out. And uh, the, the 400 men were so disappointed and so discouraged, you know, they are uh, planning amongst themselves to, uh, you know, actually uh, kill David. And David hears about it. And what does David do? He does not go and, uh, you know, uh, speak to them. He does not uh, uh, try to make them understand, hey, guys, I was with you. Uh, I've also lost my uh, wives and my children. I've lost everything that I have. Don't you think I'm, I'm also disappointed and sad and broken just like you are? But we see that the Bible says, you know, uh, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. It's a very powerful and very beautiful verse. It says, David strengthened himself in the Lord uh, his God. So when we face uh, discouragements, you know, uh, it's important for us to strengthen ourselves in the Lord our God and not run from pillar to post, from person to person, trying to explain ourselves. God will do that. All we need to do is just strengthen ourselves in the Lord our God. Okay. A God-given vision is always bigger than uh, the individual you know, God's vision is, his plans for us is big. It's nothing too small. Uh, and why is God's vision uh, big that he gives us? Anyone can share? Why do you think uh, God gives us a big vision? Any thoughts on that? Are you all there in class, everybody? Why does God give us a big vision? God trusts, trusts us, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Rosalind. God trusts us. Uh, 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 Zelotori says that so that we can work together to build this kingdom. Yes, yes, Jafina. 
yeah because uh, god is big and his plans for us are always more than what we expect and imagine so he just gives that vision to let us know how big he is and how great his plans for us thank you thank you for that thought uh, for the answer uh, you know god's vision is big yes because we serve a big god um, he has big things in mind for us in store for us uh, he trusts us also with uh, you know by giving us something big and also yes you know uh, the vision is big because god does not want us to do it all by ourselves uh, it's not i me myself who runs the whole vision but it is uh, it is other people that god brings into our vision uh, you know who help us and in the course of time they uh, also learn how to fulfill god's vision they find their calling they find their uh, uh, their talents they find uh, you know they learn uh, ways and how to run god's vision how to fulfill it how to do ministry so an example that we can look at is uh, nehemiah chapter 2 verses 12 and 17 to uh, 18 we already looked at nehemiah chapter 2 verse 12 you know when um, when uh, Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem, he, uh, you know, he wakes up in the night, he takes a few men along with him uh, to inspect the walls of Jerusalem. And uh, he does this at night because there were many people around who uh, would suspect what he's doing and try to, uh, you know, bring about uh, hindrances in his plan. Uh, so he goes around at night and he does not tell these men or he does not tell anyone what God has put in his heart to uh, do. But later on, we read that, you know, he he does reveal what he wants to do to the people and the people uh, are uh, ready and they say, let's rise up and um, and build. OK, so we see that, you know, uh, for a short time, he does not uh, reveal uh, the vision. But later on, he's you know, he does uh, uh, reveal it and the people are ready to uh, build um, uh uh, you know, the walls of Jerusalem. Also, we read in the book of Acts in uh, several places, uh, we see that, you know, Paul, whenever he ends his epistles, he always, uh, or when he begins his epistles, he always uh, talks about, uh, uh, he shares greetings. He says, you know, uh, my fellow workers or fellow prisoners, fellow partners, uh, you know, fellow uh, work fellow, yoke fellow, uh, fellow servants in the Lord, you know, send you their greetings. And he writes, uh, mentions all of their uh, names. So we see that it's Paul is actually basically saying that it's not me who's doing the work of the Lord uh, all alone, but I have all of these people who are there to support me or helping me. And so here also we see in the book of Nehemiah that Nehemiah, you know, uh, he does not envision to do this uh, building of this wall all by himself, but he reveals it to the people, and the people buy his idea. Uh, they catch a hold of his vision, and uh, they step in and they, you know, uh, help in building the walls of Jerusalem. In spite of the problems and difficulties and the hindrances, uh, they finish the uh, task. Okay, so you know, uh, sometimes when we have a God-given vision, we don't want to allow people into that, uh, our vision, uh, you know, uh, so, but we always need to know that God's vision is always bigger than uh, each one of us, which means that we cannot handle it and do everything by ourselves. Uh, God has not created us to be, uh, you know, created us as individual beings. He created us to be in companionship, to work along with others, to be interdependent, to be dependent on others, uh, you know, and uh, uh, and God himself will connect us with the right people who can, uh, who can step into our vision and help us see it uh, uh, fulfilled. So we need to, uh, when God gives us a vision, we need to know who are the right people we get in. So we need to pray about the people who come in, uh, you know, uh, we need to see people uh, who have a right attitude, uh, uh, you know, who uh, have a good relationship with God. Um, and, you know, uh, when we speak to them, uh, actually, when we pray, God 
shows us who are the people like for example you know uh and is handling the children's church at apc uh we needed teachers so i would always ask god you know god show me who you want me to go and uh, ask if they would uh, you know join uh children's church there would be ministers of children's church and god would just put uh, names in my heart or he would just show me the face of the person and i would just pray and say god you just stir up their hearts you speak to them and uh, when i go and speak to them you know they are willing and uh, they have you know many of them are still part of uh, uh, children's church even today so you know god would stir their hearts up and we need to uh, celebrate such people uh, we need to thank them but there are some people who we share with they might not take a hold of our vision they might not be interested uh, they might not come alongside with us you know we don't have to get upset we don't have to get irritated or angry um but you know uh it's it's basically because god does not want them to be involved in what we are doing as some other plan and purpose and we just need to let go uh those who come in step into our vision uh you know we treat them nicely we um don't boss over them be good to them and you know uh you know we carry out what god has laid upon our uh, hearts okay uh, choosing the wrong, wrong kind of people into our vision uh, can destroy what god wants to birth in and through our hearts uh, the next point uh, god given vision is other people find and fulfill their life's calling by participating in our god given vision so why do why does god bring in other people into our vision is basically like i said you know when they come in they can also receive their call they can know what their talents are their gifting areas are uh, they can see it or god must be uh, calling them they don't uh, understand but now when they are participating in your vision in your calling you know they would take hold of what god has called them to be uh, they can take hold of their gifting their talents and see where um, God has, uh, you know, what God has in store uh, for them. But even as people step into our vision, you know, we have to have their interests in mind, uh, you know, uh, see their areas of gifting, their talents, their areas of expertise and use that. Um, and if they are, you know, wanting to step out, they're wanting to go and start their own uh, do their own vision, fulfill their own calling. Don't be upset. Don't be angry with them. You know, uh, just bless them, let them go uh, so that they can, uh, you know, fulfill God's calling, uh, uh, you know, that God has on their lives. Okay. Dreams and visions um, are given to the body of Christ and are interlinked. We need to understand that even though God gives us a specific a vision to carry out a specific plan and purpose for our lives it's always in the context of the body of christ it is there to build the body of christ it is there to extend the kingdom of god remember we are not building our kingdom uh, we're building god's kingdom so it is to extend uh, god's kingdom here on earth and it is through the body of christ is it is through the uh, church and we cannot uh, fulfill our calling outside the body of christ you know we are called uh, to uh, uh, to work in the body of christ like it says in ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 can somebody please read ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 please Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Thank you, Jeffina. Amen to this verse because we see that here that, you know, God is giving us specific visions, uh, you know, to help the body of uh, Christ, you know, so that uh, the body of Christ can grow, uh, the body of Christ can be edified, and uh, they can be uh, the body of Christ can be edified in love, even as each one of us uh, do our part. So even though our visions are very different from each other, you know, we are this whole body that is joined together, just like our hands, our legs, our different parts of uh, the different organs of our body. 
um, you know, all join together to work as one whole, to work, uh, even though we have different, uh, each body part has different, different functions, all work together for the wholeness of uh, the, the body. In the same way, you know, each one of us uh, have different callings, different visions that God is giving to us, but it is, uh, it is in the context of the body of Christ and whatever we do is going to cause growth in the body of Christ and it's going to edify the body of Christ and build the body of Christ in um, love, okay? So even as you go about your life and you want to become a kingdom builder, uh, you know, you are you uh, are interested in building God's kingdom. Ask God to give you uh, not just a vision, a plan to show you the plan and vision for your life, but ask God to give you a big heart, okay, uh, to accommodate his uh, big vision that he uh, gives you. Because, uh, you know, a small heart has only room for I, me, myself, um, it has no room to accommodate other people. It has no room to accommodate, uh, to see uh, what God is calling us to do in the light of um, the whole body of Christ, um, to build up uh, the church. Um, so, you know, to, uh, for us to do that, it requires a big heart. So ask God to give you not just a big vision, but a big heart, um, because a small heart is a place where, you know, there is insecurity, there's jealousy, uh, there's uh, selfish ambition, self-centeredness, competition. Uh, and, we you know, all of these things uh, cannot help us, uh, can be a hindrance from us to, uh, you know, fulfilling God's vision for our lives. Because all of this uh, comes out of a carnal nature. And we know that, you know, out of our fleshly carnal nature, we cannot build the kingdom of God, it won't stand long. And hence, we need to work uh, uh, in the spiritual nature, uh, which is, you know, uh, which portrays itself through the gifts of the spirit, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so if the fruits of the spirit have to be manifested in our lives, we need to have a big heart where it's not just me, but it's everybody else. It's thinking about everybody else and accommodating others into our vision and seeing how our vision can, uh, you know, build the kingdom of God. Okay, so that is um, uh, chapter four. Anyone has any questions about God-given vision? Anyone's already received uh, your, you know, uh, God's vision for your life and you're going about uh, doing it? Anyone here? You can just raise up your hand. I can just see it or you can just type it in the chat section. Anyone here already knows what God's uh, vision for your life is? Okay, you're going about doing it. Okay, thank you, Jefina. Anyone else? Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Subhashis. Thank you, Abu Bakr. And Zelotoli. Okay, good. Roslyn. And so I hope these uh, lessons are really helping you. For those of you who are still trying to find out what's God's uh, vision for your life, what's his plan and purpose. You know, uh, you're learning all this in advance, and I'm sure this is going to uh, help you. Anyone has any questions in lesson four? When is the right time? Uh, sorry, can you elaborate on your question, please? When is the right time to share the vision? Uh, good question. When is the right time to share the vision? Uh, basically, maybe you could, um, you know, um, uh, you know, ask God, the Holy Spirit, through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, or the inner voice or the audible voice of the Holy Spirit can just lead you um, uh, to know when is the right time to share the vision. Uh, also important to know who to share the vision with. So maybe if you meet like-minded people who are, you know, uh, uh, following the same vision that God has uh, placed in your heart and you see them as mature 
uh, Christian believers, uh, you could, you know, pray and ask God. And if you find the peace of God in your heart, there's no restlessness, there's no agitation, uh, then you could go ahead and share. Uh, you could even ask God, God, when is the right time? Uh, who do you want me to share with? With God will show you, God will bring people. He will orchestrate uh, situations, people in your life, and they will, bring, they will come in and then you can uh, share it uh, with them. Yeah. So it's basically just depending on the Lord. Um, of course, God, you can use your mind as well because God has given us our mental faculties to use. And uh, if we are, you know, having a renewed mind, uh, a renewed mind that is walking in the ways and the thoughts of God, then the renewed mind is always in agreement with what the Spirit is telling us, guiding us and leading us. Uh, they both they both work together, the renewed mind and uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit. So they work in agreement. So sometimes, uh, you know, your mind can also tell you, okay, this is the right time. You can go and share with this person. You can feel a steering in your heart or prompting, um, just a leading to do it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe peace, joy in your heart. You can sense all of that, and then you can go and share it with the person. Okay, thank you for that question, Roslyn. Discouragements are the time of sharing. Will it delay the vision? This, uh, sorry, discouragements. You mean discouragements at the time of sharing? Will it delay the vision? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. At the time of sharing. Okay, when you're sharing uh, with people and you're discouraged with their uh, responses, uh, will it delay the vision? Uh, is that what you're saying, Rosalind? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I just said, you know, uh, uh, when, when you know, when you're sharing with somebody and you are hoping that, you know, this person is doing something that, you know, uh, basically already involved, you want to step in and do, and they have been there many years, you're discouraged with the response that you get from them. Uh, you know, it's not going to delay the uh, vision. Uh, but, you know, it's basically God showing you in one way, hey, this is not the right person that um, I want to be involved in your vision. You know, if they're going to step in, they're going to, you know, uh, then going to delay things for you. Okay, uh, they're going to uh, take you off into, uh, distract you into doing things uh, in a different way than what God has really purposed in your heart. So uh, there can be people who are doing the same thing. Uh, for example, children's ministry, there can be people who are working in different areas of children's ministry, but maybe uh, what God has called you to do is more specific in one specific area. You know, so uh, you know that you have that clarity. So it's important to get guidance, but also if people who come in from their own expertise, uh, they'll say, hey, you know, this is how I was doing this. I was working with these kind of children. This is what you need to do. Then they can, you know, sidetrack you and you can go totally off uh, uh, what God is calling you to do. So it's important that, you know, uh, 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 you know, specifically what God has called you to do and people who come in are specifically doing what God has laid on your heart. But yes, uh, you know, if they are not willing to step in, now don't be angry, don't uh, be disappointed and discouraged uh, because, uh, you know, that's a sign that God is showing you, I don't want this person to be involved in, in the vision. And it's not going to delay things. But if you get the wrong people inside, it can delay things, yes. Did that help? Thank okay. you. Okay, anyone has any questions? How do we identify God's vision for our lives? Um, yes, you did this course uh, last year, you know, uh, fulfilling, uh, uh, you know, God's vision or God's call for your life and, uh, you know, receiving God's guidance. Uh, to that you learned how to know God's vision for your life. So uh, I, I would encourage you, Isaac, to go back and read that uh, the nine guide posts uh, that are there in uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Um, you know, and uh, uh, you know, through a stirring in the heart, through uh, the times and seasons, God orchestrating things for your life. Uh, you know, through all of these things, you know, God can, um, uh, or through his word, when you're reading, he can reveal 
uh, the vision that uh, he has for you. Um, basically, sometimes God might be speaking to us, but we are not in a position where we're hearing from him. So we need to, you know, tune ourselves, align our will to God's will. And, uh, you know, we can hear from him. He can reveal it to us. So I just basically like you to uh, read through that publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. It very beautifully, very clearly um, explains to us um, how to receive, uh, how to identify God's calling, his purpose for our life. And also, uh, you know, uh, the other book that you studied in, um, in your first year, you know, Receiving God's Guidance for Your Life. It's basically to the nine guide post, the guide, the principles that we, uh, is mentioned in uh, in fulfilling God's purpose for your life and how God leads us and guides us. Okay. That help, Isaac? Yes, ma. Thank you. Yeah, that's a whole course in itself. So, anyone else has any other questions? Or oh, basically, Isaac, you can just ask God. You know, please. Uh, uh, I want to do what what you envision for me, what you plan and purpose for me. Uh, just get in tune with God, align yourself to God, uh, build up your relationship with God, strengthen it, hear from the Holy Spirit and say, God, show me what you want me to do. Prepare me and show me and God would reveal his vision and plan for your life. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, we'll move on to chapter five. Okay. Uh, anyone knows this song, We Have a Vision? I really don't know this song fully. Anyone knows it? Pastor Jake sings it during our worship time, but anyone? Okay. If nobody knows it, when you skip that song, uh, I think if if John Paul was here, is John Paul here in class today? Okay, don't think he's in there class. Okay, if uh, we can, can we move on to chapter five, please? Is that okay? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, thank you. So we'll move on to chapter five. In chapter five, we are basically looking at the kingdom builders lifestyle. We looked at uh, kingdom lifestyle in uh, the previous book that we looked at, uh, you know, um, the kingdom of God. But we look at it in a little more detail here. Uh, you know, as kingdom builders, you know, we are so involved in doing, you know, it's just doing, doing, doing. We become like Martha. Uh, you know, busy ourselves, uh, 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 being busy bodies, doing what God has called us to do because it seems endless. But uh, we're so preoccupied with that. But, you know, God is more interested in us uh, being like Mary, where we're sitting at his feet, just hearing from him, listening to what he has to say. God is not so much interested in how much we do for him. He's more interested in our personal lives. He's more interested in our character in our walk with him, uh, in the way we live our lives, in the way we do life. So that is what he's more interested uh, in. So in this chapter, we are basically going to be looking at uh, the kingdom builders uh, life or how we are to live our life. And we're going to look at three main uh, areas, godly character, uh, spiritual maturity and uh, stewardship. Okay. So, um, is godly character important uh, in kingdom building? What are your thoughts? Yes, Rosalind? You have your hand up. Is godly character important in kingdom building? Yes, it's important. Thank you, Zelotori. Yes, Why is it? it's very okay. important. Yes, it's very important. Oh, it's very important. <laughs> yes, it is very, very, very important. Why is a godly character important? Why is godly character important? Uh, I don't think we can build a kingdom without character. 
if we are not built in ourselves how can we build the kingdom of god okay thank you anyone else everything is built on one's character yes You know, our gifts can take us to various places, you know, the gifting that God has given you, the talents. But if you don't have the right character, you know, it cannot hold you in that place. It cannot hold you in that uh, position. So your gifts can take you where your character can't keep you, you know. So it's this, uh, it's the same, like you, you can have uh, excellent gifting, you can be an excellently uh, skilled, gifted uh, person. But if you don't have the character, you know, you know, there's no place that can hold you even though you have the best uh, gifting, okay? So we'll come back after the break and uh, we'll look at um, uh, Chapter 5, okay? You can take your break and come back and we'll see you after the break. Thank you, everyone.